when we started this business, we just wanted to paint houses and we wanted to get paid for painting houses. You know, that's pretty simple. And I think that's where 95% of our competition stops. And for us, at least in my heart and in my mind, for many years, our vision's been much bigger than that. Like when we say we want to be great, we don't measure that in along state lines. Like how are we the biggest painting company in Connecticut or the most profitable? We're, we're not looking at that. How are we as good as we can possibly be? And my promise is I'll work hard every single day to continually improve the customer experience from MDF painting. As long as I do that, we're going to keep getting better. And in I mean, we've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm more excited now with 20 plus years under my belt to go out there and continually improve our customer service experience. Does that mean it's bad? No, it's excellent, but it could be so much better. And, and, and we can dissect all these little things and work on them and get them to be better. And I think that's one of the great things of having a small business because you could constantly improve. It's, it's really, it's a blessing for us. You know, in the early years, we used to just go around and, you know, accrue friends and we'd stuff mailboxes with flyers and different things. And we'd drive around neighborhoods that we thought were nice neighborhoods and just put things in mailboxes. I had friends that would just be going for their, you know, two mile run in the morning and take a packet of cards and put them in mailboxes. And I think a, a turning point for me was a, after a few years and, you know, started getting call-ins and people, you know, I'd, I'd always ask, you know, we still do, where did you hear about us from? And when people started saying, I just know who you are. I know MDF painting, you know, you're, you're the painter. I've seen your signs. I've gotten your flyers. I've seen your trucks. And that was just a, a real turning point for me to just when people, when I started getting so many calls of everybody just saying, I know who you are. It was like, we branded well, um, just by going out and hustling and getting our name out there as best as we could. One amazing moment was when I had, I was on a sales appointment and I met a potential customer and I asked them, where did they hear about us? Oh. And I always ask that of, of all of our customers when they call in, they're asked that by the office. And then often the salesperson will ask it again. And they said, I hear about you everywhere. And I hear that a lot. I mean, people say, hey, we saw your trucks and we saw your yard signs and our neighbor had work done. But she, I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, I keep trying to get an estimate from another painter and I can't. And that was odd. I'd never heard anyone say that before. And I said, what do you mean? Explain to me what you mean. I'd say, well, I just relocated from Colorado to Connecticut and I want to have the best painter paint my house. And so I went into work and I asked people at my workplace, um, which was Yale University, uh, who's a great painter? And so two separate people said, call MDF painting. And then I went online and I did some searches and you seem to be the painter that has the most rave reviews and the painter of choice. And then I talked to my neighbor and you painted their house. And then I went across the street and talked to another neighbor and you painted their house. And she said, so I want someone to give me another name other than MDF painting. But in like two months, I haven't had anyone that I trust give me another name. So here you are. So please give me a pretty reasonable price so we can just hire you. And I was like, wow, I appreciate you being so candid. And I remember leaving that appointment, and this was a few years ago, and calling my office and just reliving that story and saying, hey, I feel like we made it. I feel like we've reached a turning point because when I hear that, that's it. That's what I want to have happen. That's why I want to be the best. Uh, so that a person is just who, who's new to the area and doesn't know anyone is getting all this positive feedback from the community. I frame myself as Rocky on the mat having to get up all the time in little things and big things. It sounds crazy. I mean, I, I guess maybe I liked Rocky music when I was a child and I loved the mu movies when I was young, but from a very early age, probably athletics being the beginning of that, I saw myself as the undersized kid, as the kid who wasn't fast enough, who wasn't tall enough. And my way to compensate for that was to say, even when it wasn't even true, <laughs> to frame the, the story as I was the underdog and I had to do things to overcome it. And so even now, we're one of the best painting companies in Connecticut, hands down. I, I, don't, I say that because that's a fact now. 10 years ago or 15 years ago, maybe it wasn't true. 
I feel like Rocky every single day. And I'm saying to myself, we're not 20 million a year or we don't have this company culture that we need to have. And I'm constantly framing my situation as the underdog. And I think for me, maybe that's my way of allowing the chip to always be on my shoulder. Like I read stories of Tom Brady who always wants to go back to, hey, I was a the 200 person. 200th person taken in the draft or whatever he was where no one thought I was going to make it although he's accomplished everything in his sport that there is to accomplish I think to get to the grind like you have to embrace the grind the everyday grind how do you embrace it in a way that adds energy and excitement and enthusiasm and for me that's looking at myself as the underdog even when I'm not the underdog and framing the narrative in that way and believing that I tell my wrestlers, and I think I've mentioned this to you before, greatness happens every moment. What does that mean? Like the, the practice every day is a grind. You know, running laps is a grind. Doing line hops is a grind. Doing, um, practicing moves is a grind. So is doing estimates or answering this phone in your business or doing pre-job meetings or executing um, follow-up with customer. It's a grind. But how do you love the grind? I think you love the grind by having that narrative in your head. Where am I? Where do I want to be? How do I get there? And knowing that being great at the grind in those little moments is what's going to lead to sustained greatness for yourself, for your company. And then enjoying that process. I mean, eventually you have to say like, I love it. I love trying to execute. I mean, I go into meetings saying, what is the outcome I wanna have from this meeting? I do this all the time. I just have always done that. I don't know where I learned it. And it's a way, it's, it's very competitive for me. When I was at Boston College, I had the great fortune of being able to visit El Salvador and, um, I wouldn't call it a service trip, although service was a big element of it. I would call it more of an immersion trip. Business is my way to try to make a mark on the world. It's my way to try to leave things a little bit better than I found them. So, you know, when I see that El Salvador story and I was down there, part of having your heart broken is you feel just powerless. Like you see poverty and corruption on a scale that's so big that, and especially as someone who's trying to be an educated college student, right? You sit back and you say, what can I do to impact that? And it's overwhelming. Intellectually, it's overwhelming. And I think what you come away with is, how do I control the things that I can control, which basically is myself. Whether or not you're donating time or money or energy or your thoughts or your prayers or, or whatever it is on, on an individual level, as long as you're saying, how do I be great in the moment and how do I contribute on some level, that's what you can do. And yes, yeah, some of us are gonna have a greater voice or have greater ability. I mean, I could have chose to just be at every protest. And I think if I could build a great company that benefits consumers and employees and then gives back on some level, wow, maybe I can do something amazing. You know, And that's how I look at it. What I'm looking for in a new employee is someone who wants to have a great career in one place. Someone who's enthusiastic and passionate about going to work and someone who has a great attitude. Someone who's a positive person. So yes, I want skilled people. Everyone wants skilled people. But I want people who want to join our family. People who have a great attitude and want to serve the customer. The most important thing for them has to be giving their best and feeling like they're contributing to a winning team and serving a customer. Not just getting paid or not just putting paint to a wall. Anyone can do that. We want people who are leaders in their own right. And what can they get in return? We wanna produce a place that gives them great career opportunities. I mean, we're very proud to have just come up with a, we call it a pathway to $100,000 income for our crew leaders. And that's something in our industry is very rare. And our marketplace is very rare. And I call it a pathway because we're basically constructing uh, the framework with which they can reach that goal. And we're giving them all the tools and all the systems and all the protocols that they need to operate within to guarantee that outcome. And this isn't for someone who's brand new or never ran a crew before. This is for a senior crew leader who has a lot of experience, but now can use our little tools and our little systems in order to build a pathway for themselves to, at least from a numeric standpoint, 
a hundred thousand dollar a year career, which is a very nice thing. So um, those are the types of things that, that I hope to build for every single employee. I want more great people to join our team so we could have a better family and so that more customers could, could know that hiring a painting contractor can be great. It could be a fun experience. It could be a professional experience. It could be something that I'm not dreading or I'm not putting off because I really like these guys. Like we have past customers who have done 15, 20 projects with us and they're like happy to have us come to the door. They're not dreading, oh my God, who's gonna be in my home? Can I trust them? So our ability to spread the good word of that to the marketplace uh, in Connecticut and beyond is exciting. I want customers to be excited about MDF painting. I want them to, I want our customers to not consider it just a painting job. Um, they, I, I love when I get reviews and cards thanking, thanking us for the work done, saying that they didn't want our painters to leave. It feels weird not having them anymore because they were just, we were all so friendly and you know, we really, we really become family. Our customers become our family. It, you know, it's all wonderful. It's, it's wonderful to, to all be in this together. I think employees say that we're a competitive workplace, that we're always trying to be better, that we don't just paint houses. And I think that's different from a lot of the other places that they've worked. Our expectation is not for you to be a robot. It's not for you to come to work and just put paint to a wall. Obviously we're painting contractors. We have to put paint to a wall. But if our objective is to transform a space in which someone lives, so that they can have memorable moments in that space or they could feel good about living in that space, we've done our job. If we have, a, we have a saying, paint happiness. Paint happiness means that we execute a job in such a way that we've communicated in a friendly way from beginning to end and we've kept the customer involved in the process by updating them on what's going on and by asking for, for their feedback at the right moments. And that I think is what they feel about MDF painting and what might be different than some other places where I hear guys say, well, I was just one of five painters in a crew and my foreman just said, hey, put this paint on the wall. I obsess about MDF painting. Anyone who knows me really well knows that I get down into the details and obsess about improving things. Right now, I'm obsessed about having a better company culture. Right now, I wanna have a company culture in which every single one of our employees loves where they work and is a raving fan employee where they're going out and they're telling their family and friends and everybody who will listen, man, I love working here. It feels like a family. I go into the office, I get food. I have a meeting, I feel good about what we're doing. I get recognized for doing something positive. Hey, I'm learning. I have the ability to take an English as a second language class and get paid for it. Wow. I'm encouraged to read books about self-improvement, to read books about customer service, and I get paid for it. Um, I get to go to team events with my family, whether it's restaurants or sporting events, and celebrate as a team with this company. I, I would never work for another painting company. It's the best place ever to work for. That's, that's my goal. That's what I'm obsessed about right now. And I, and I hope I will be obsessed about that for years to come because there's always things we could do to improve that.